oscillations are all about ironing a circle flat. Let's see how we can understand this. This may be our circle. Like any circle, it has a circumference. And the circumference is given by c equals 2 pi times the radius. If we choose our radius conveniently as unity, we obtain the radian scale. 2 pi is one entire turn of this circle, and um, pi corresponds to a half turn of this circle. Now, going with a few people who make a lot of noise at the moment, even introduced a tau day in June, we can also call this tau times r. Again, express the circumference of the unit circle in terms of radians. You can see tau is no different than 2 pi. Conventionally, we can use also a variety of degree scales. The most common one is the one that divides a circle into 360 degrees. In that case, you, get, you need a reference direction and define an angle with respect to that reference direction and you obtain for a full turn of the circle that that corresponds to 360 degrees. Now what can we do with a circle like this? Well, why don't we put a point mass on it and observe it moving around in a uniform fashion so we obtain uniform rotational motion, which is defined by a constant angular momentum vector pointing upward, L, which is equal to the moment of inertia theta associated with, that's a different theta as the angle, moment of inertia associated with the mass moving anti-clockwise in the circular fashion times an also constant angular frequency vector that is also pointing upward. Both of these vectors L and omega are parallel and they're pointing upward. Angular frequency. And we call this motion uniform rotational motion. Let's cut out this circle in order, in order to understand it better. We can look at this uniform rotational motion in sections by turning the, the circle 45 degrees, 90 degrees, 135 degrees, 180 degrees and so on. And see what consequences that motion has on a projection and how it behaves as a function of time. This is again our circular path, and on that path we draw a time scale like this. This is our time axis, T, and once we've got a time axis we need a zero point in time or a reference time which we call zero which is here, t equals 0, and the axis we call the projection axis, or alternatively the projection plane, because what we want to do is follow the motion of this mass, m, as a function of time, and these are our intervals, they could be one second, two second, three second, and so on. But alternatively, we can define them in terms of sections of the circle. So we might have in radians pi quarter, pi half, three quarter pi, and finally pi, and so on whereby this is of course 180 degrees. In order to visualize this better, let's divide 
our demonstration cycle circle further into a quarters and now into eighth. Two more eighths to come. So now we've got eight octants. And each octant corresponds to pi quarter radians of 45 degrees. At zero time, our mass m is at this point, and we want to indicate that on the time scale with a little cross here. On the projection scale using green, we also at this point. Now we move on anti clockwise with constant angular momentum to 45 degrees pi quarter and uh, we have moved up the projection scale up to this point and on the time in reference to the time scale we are now at this position so we have moved here we are moving further another 45 degrees moving up on the projection axis to this point and with reference to the time scale here another 45 degrees turn now we've come back on the projection axis and on the time scale we now here so we have turned at this point here yeah, this is the turning point and we're moving in the other direction the projection moves in the other direction giving us a point there another 45 degrees we are back to zero we are on the time axis at pi we are down here so we have a curve that looks like this and the projection has moved down to zero as well another 45 degrees we now have to go to this point so we're moving here and with respect to the time axis we are now here another 45 degrees this is now three half of um, pi or 270 degrees and we are here and our projection has moved a little bit further down and has another turning point another 45 degrees gives us a return to here and on the time axis we are with reference to the time axis we are here finally we're coming back to zero we have turned 360 degrees which is at this point so this would be the 2 pi we are here and we can keep going so another 45 degrees we are up here and you can see that we're repeating the motion we just proceeded through and equivalently we go down here to zero and then move up again there now the function you see developing here is a sine function and it's a function of t so we have to have t in the argument and uh, if we quantify it in terms of radians, we need to obtain 2, po 2 pi at this point. So we need a calibration constant, which we call omega. And that omega is equal to 2 pi divided by a time t. And that time t is the time it takes for the entire turn, the entire path around the circle of our point mass, which we call the period. And in terms of radians, one entire turn, again, is 2 pi. Therefore, 2 pi on t gives us a divide, two, ti, 2 pi divided by t times the time t gives us um, 2 pi at this point, And that is one period of the rotation. And is also one period of this regular function. Now, if we look at the projection of um, the point mass onto the projection axis, we can see that it first went up, 
then again through the zero position down and up and down and up and we see that this is in fact the motion of a simple pendulum. In fact it's the motion of any kind of oscillator. So what we hear of the project what we hear what we have here on the projection axis is the motion of a oscillator. Motion of an oscillator. Now you can see what I mean by ironing the circle onto a flat surface. That's exactly what we have here. We're projecting out the circular motion of the point mass onto the flat surface and that gives us an oscillation. That oscillation has a constant frequency omega when the rotational frequency the angular frequency vector of the rotational motion is constant. Then we talk about uniform rotation or harmonic rotation and harmonic oscillation. So constant omega means harmonic oscillation. If this motion, as in this case because the circle, we have a circle, follows a sine function then we talk about simple harmonic motion. And the sine function here has been plotted out nicely. That's for the position. So the position on the projection axis is equal to x of t equals to sine of omega t. Now let's go one step further and see what happens to the speed. When the point mass is at this point in time, the speed is rather large because we're moving upward towards the first turning point. So we need to indicate a large positive speed, which we might do in blue. Then we're moving 45 degrees. Now we are in position, we are at this point, we're still moving upward but not with the same speed. So we've, we're still positive but we've come down in speed. And then finally we are at the turning point which is up which is up here and the speed has come down to zero which is here so here we have a function that looks like this now beyond the turning point we change direction and the speed becomes negative as we can see from our plot here and we have quite some significant speed going going uh, downward which is this point and uh, finally, at the second turning point, we are at rest again. So here, the speed should be zero. No, we're not at the rest at the turning point. We are at the trans. We're going through the zero position. So we have maximum speed, but that speed is zero. So that's this point. Then another 45 degrees. We again have a negative speed, but not as much. And finally, at this point, we know at the turning point. Now the speed is zero, so now we're here. And you can see this is also a trigonometric function. In fact, it is the cosine function. So the v of t is proportional to the cosine of omega t. And the two functions are shifted by 90 degrees. The speed function is follows the position function, the displacement function, by, by 90 degrees. You can also see that we can swap the two over. We can make the position function a sine function and the v function a cosine function because all we need to do is to shift our projection axis from this point of time to a different point of time. Let's move it forward by 90 degrees. Now our position function is a cosine function and our speed function has become a minus sine function. These kinds of shifts are referred to as phase shifts and they can be included in the description by including a constant plus phi in the argument of the sine function or the cosine function. Okay, you can see it's all swings and roundabouts. In fact, oscillations and rotations are 
swings or roundabouts. They are the same sort of thing.